I sent home from school one day with a shiner on my eye. Fighting was against the rules and it didn't matter why. When Dad got home, I told that story just like I'd rehearsed. Then stood there on those trembling knees and waited for the worst. He said, let me tell you a secret about a father's love. A secret that my daddy said was just between us. He said daddies don't just love their children every now and then It's love without end, amen It's love without end, amen When I became a father in the spring of 2001 There was no doubt that stubborn boy was just like my father's son when I thought my patience had been tested to the end I took my daddy's secret and I passed it on to him and I said, let me tell you a secret about a father's love A secret that my daddy said was just between us I said, daddies don't just love their children every now and then. It's love without end, amen. It's love without end, amen. Last night I dreamed I died and stood outside those pearly gates. Suddenly I realized there must be some mistake They knew half the things I'd done that never let me in Then somewhere from the other side I heard these words again They said, let me tell you a secret out of Father's love secret that my daddy said was just between us you see daddies don't just love their children every now and then it's love without end amen it's love without end amen All right, how's everybody doing this morning? Pretty good shape, amen, 16 degrees on mine this morning, so thank you all for being here. We're down just a little bit, but uh, we've got a lot of folks sick, we know that, so we're going to continue to pray for our church family, amen. Boomer, you got something for us? Good morning, everybody. Hey, last week I come up here and talked about community groups and was talking about a new one that we did not have in our, in our uh, pamphlets back there, but I looked this morning and we do have the new one in our pamphlets back there. So, uh, Mr. Jimmy, if you'll stand up, just show everybody who you are. If you live on the northeast side of Lawrence County, northwest side of Giles County, we're starting a new community group uh, being led by Mike Yarborough at Mr. Jimmy's house. So, um, if you don't know where that's at, I believe the address is in the, yes, the address is in the pamphlet. Or you can see Mr. Jimmy or Miss Liz and they will be glad to tell you it's starting Wednesday night at 6.30. Uh, I have not seen Mike Yarborough come in, but he can tell you where it's at as well. And uh, just hook up with them and join in on that community group. If you do not live in that area and you want to find a community group, all of them are listed in this pamphlet, which is on the back table labeled as community groups. So we uh, love our community groups. They're the, the lifeblood of the church. Um, if, if you're not involved in one, we would really encourage you to get involved in one. Uh, they're just a real blessing to, uh, to, to you and, and to the church family as a whole. Thank you, Mr. Boomer. Appreciate you. Other thing I want to mention is uh, the uh, ministry teams. And uh, you'll see in your worship folder this morning uh, the opportunity to be a part of those teams. I ask you to just begin to pray about where the Lord would have you to serve. And uh, everybody's equipped with some type of gift and talent. Uh, again, on the table back there, there's a list of those teams. Say something to, to one of the lay pastors 
uh, the team leaders. If you're interested in serving on a team, and uh, we'll be putting those together and refreshing those teams just in the next few weeks. All right? Also, uh, we don't talk about money here at Cowboy Church very often. We are, uh, as you see in your worship folder, we got a thermometer, okay? And we're going to raise that thing up to about $100,000 to uh, put toward uh, the new facility and uh, to expand. And uh, it's not going to cost hundred grand. It's going to cost more than that, of course, but that's going to be a, a, a starting point. So pray about what the Lord would have you to to give and uh, do the math sometimes uh, 10 bucks a week times so and so and 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 see what see what how that works out so uh, think about that pray about that see what the Lord have you to give mark it on your envelopes this is up and above tithe dollars okay for for our, our church family and mark it on there so much toward the Ford campaign and uh, I think we'll be surprised what the Lord will do through us amen let's pray together if you want to stand we'll pray and uh Y'all ready to roll? All right. Let's pray together. Father, we just thank you for the day and the privilege you give us to get out. And, uh, Lord, I just thank you for a warm bed last night and the provisions that you give us for the road. We ask you to uh, accept our worship back to you today. Draw all men, all women to the name of Jesus. In Christ's name, amen. All right. Y'all stay standing. We're going to kick it back in here. with uh, Lift your head where he's center. We got us an electric player today. So we threw this song in. Lift your head, weary sinner, rivers just ahead. Down the path of forgiveness, salvation's waiting there. You build a mighty fortress, 10,000 burdens high. Love is there to lift you up, there to lift you high. So if you're lost and a wandering, come stumbling in like a Walls start crumbling at the gates of glory open wide. All who strayed and walked away, unspeakable things you've done. Fix your eyes on the mountain, let the past be dead and gone. Come on, you saints and sinners, you can't outrun God. Whatever you've done can't overcome the power of the blood. Cause if you're lost and wandering, come stumbling in like a prodigal child. See the walls start crumbling, let the gates of glory open. If you're lost and wrecked again, come stumbling in like a prodigal child. See the walls start crumbling, let the gates of glory open wide. Start back, lift your head. Lift your head, weary sinner. The river's just ahead. Down the path of forgiveness, salvation's waiting there. You build a mighty fortress, 10,000 burdens high. Love is there to lift you up, it's there to lift you high. So if you're lost and wandering, come stumbling in like a prodigal child. See the walls start crumbling, let the gates of glory open. If you're lost and wrecked again, come stumbling in like a prodigal
what you see I've tried to win this war I confess my hands are weary I need your rest mighty warrior king of the fight no matter what I face you're by my side when you you know what tomorrow brings there's not a day ahead you have not seen so in all things be my life and breath i want what you want lord and nothing less when you don't move the mountains i'm needing you to move
we just got one more song. Y'all can have a seat. Y'all can sing along with this one. We've done it a few times. I just don't think you can sing a song called Real Men Love Jesus too many times. I, I like this one. Real men love fishing, fast cars and living that too. Out on the edge so far, they're gonna need forgiving. Real men love football, cowboys and outlaws. Can't help but fly so high, it's gonna hurt to fall. They like Saturday nights out on the town. Sunday morning coming down Pretty girl out on the dance floor spinning Round and round and round they go And a cold cook in a dirty hand Calling home every chance they can Say I love you, they don't need a reason Real men love Jesus yeah, They love mama they can get more than 40 hours, you know they're gonna. They give it hell till they get it right. Every country girl's trying to find. Every girl's daddy's kind of guy. Ain't scared to pray, ain't scared to fight. They're like Saturday nights out on the town. Sunday morning coming down. Pretty girl out on the dance floor spinning. Round and round. Say I love you, they don't need a reason Real men love Jesus Real men love Jesus Don't believe in leaving When the going gets tough They just keep on keeping Right, y'all, as Pastor Nate makes his way up, let's say a prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the ones who are here today, and thank you for this cold, cold stretch of winter that um, reminds us to be thankful for at least a heater. I'm very thankful for that as I sleep at night and I don't freeze. And thank you for reminding us that you're in charge of things like the weather and you're in charge of everything that's going on. And, Father, you do all things for the, for the glory of yourself. In Jesus' name we give thanks. Amen. Amen. Good morning, guys. How are y'all this morning? Good to see that you're either over the flu or about to get the flu and that you come to church this morning. Anybody here sick? Just want to see who I need to shake hands with and who I don't. If you got your Bible, open them up to 1 Peter. 1 Peter, if you don't know where the book of 1 Peter is, in chapter 4, uh, just look in that handy-dandy table of contents in the front of... Uh, all your Bibles there. Uh, last week we we talked about uh, the parable of the talents and how you basically had two servants, two workers that used their talents to double their master's money that he entrusted them with. 
and we had one servant, one worker uh, that basically took the talent that he was given, and what did he do with it? He didn't double it, he buried it. There was one that buried it, and he did not do as he was supposed to do with what it was he was given. And we talked a little bit about how the Lord has gifted us, he has blessed us with all sorts of things. He's, he's blessed us with all that we have. Basically, everything that you've got right now, uh, even on your person, your clothes, your hats, your boots, your vehicles, your all of those things God has entrusted us with for a short time. Why? Because you cannot, believe it or not, take it with you. And so... We've been entrusted, we've been made stewards over all the things that God has given us. Are we using those things for God's glory? Are we using them to advance the gospel? Also our time. Everybody's been given how many hours in a day? You've been given 24, okay? Some of you work as though you've been given 28, but technically all of us have been given 24. Some of us do better with time. Some of us do a horrible job with time, but we've been given 24 hours in a day. And so those are things that God has blessed us with. How are we using that time to advance the gospel for God's glory? Some of you have been given extraordinary abilities in life, whatever that may be. You've got a little niche, something that you're good at. And complaining, guys, is not what I'm talking about, all right? Yeah, I know. You know the, you know the type. But you've been given some uh, different abilities that God has blessed you with, certain talents, if you will, that God has blessed you with. Are you using them to advance the gospel? Are you using all the things that God has blessed you with? The Lord has blessed all of us, believe it or not. Even We don't live in a third world country. Uh, even the person that makes the, the bare minimum in, li- minimum in life to scrape by is still much more wealthy than the majority of the world. And so God has blessed us with money. He's blessed us with possessions. Are we using that money to advance the gospel? Whenever we look at our checkbook, what does it say that is most important to us? For some of us, it's Walmart, right? Man's got to eat. But y'all understand what you're saying. What, 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 what is it that, that we have, what it is that we possess, all of those things, how are we using them to advance the gospel? And the reason, and at the end of the parable of the talents, we find out the reason why we need to be thinking about these things is because the Lord is coming back. Do you know that? Have you read, is that registered in your mind? One day, Jesus is going to be coming back. Now, I served a church one time, and I think I've told you this before, but I served a church one time in Alabama. I won't name its name since we're on, you know, Facebook Live and whatnot. Well, I served a church one time that had millions of dollars in the bank through different uh, accounts. And, you know, you had the the women's lady teacup account and the quilting fund and all these very important type ministry uh, deals that that, that they had. all these. But if you took all of that and liquidated it at one time, they had millions in the bank. And my greatest fear, and this is one thing that I even told our leadership there at the time, my greatest fear one day is that the Lord Jesus will come back and see all of those accounts and all those millions of dollars and all that money we could have taken to reach people with the gospel, but instead we're hoarders of it and proud of how much we had in the bank and all of these things that Jesus was going to come back and we're going to be left still holding the bag going. What did we do? What type of ministry did we use these things that we have been gifted with? And so the basics of of what it is that we're going to be talking about really over the next couple of weeks, we'll just see as the Lord leads, but we don't need to squander our life. We don't need to waste our life. We need to count it as a blessing. All the things that we've been blessed with and all our time, talents, money, all the things that we have, we need to consider them on loan from the Lord, and one day He is coming back for those things. Are we going to be like the two good servants that doubled what it was that the Lord gave us? Today, we're going to look at an introduction to spiritual gifts, one thing that I've never preached on at Thousand Hills Cowboy Church. I've taught on it, 
in small groups, but I've never uh, actually, you know, done a, a full, you know, uh, a preaching type style uh, sermon on spiritual gifts. And I want you to realize is that spiritual gifts are something that are given to those that are in Christ Jesus for Christians. And so if you were in Christ this morning, I do believe biblically that you have at least one spiritual gift. And I also believe that you need to be using that somehow, some way. So I want to start off by asking a question. If you were in Christ this morning, you have been given at least one spiritual gift. How many of you know what your spiritual gift or gifts are? How many of you? Just raise your hand if you know what some spiritual gifts are. Okay. All right. You can put your hands down. So that means a lot of you actually do not know. So hopefully over the next couple weeks, we're going to help discover what those spiritual gifts are. The first step in good stewardship is knowing and identifying your spiritual gift. Why? So you can be able to be, able to be used with them. Use them for God's glory. To make much of him and not of us. Now listen, spiritual giftedness, and I'll tell you this, it goes, it, it's, it's a wide variety of them. And I'm going to specifically talk about all the gifts next week. I just didn't have time to get it all in one deal. But it, there's a wide variety of gifts. And a lot of gifts are kind of upfront type gifts. Gifts that you, um, you know, hear uh, and see and you kind of identify and realize that that is part of gifting. Some gifts are kind of behind the scenes gifts. But regardless, all of us have them, but we have to use them for God's glory. And it's not about us. It's not about, oh man, that guy, you know, he is so gifted, you know, or she is so gifted or they are so gifted. It's not about putting uh, the spotlight on individuals. It's about putting the spotlight on the Lord. Does that make sense? I've told you before from the pulpit, believe me, I, I, there is not a shadow of a doubt that I am the least among everybody in here to be up here from the pulpit. I, I, I promise you, I didn't aspire to be a pastor or a preacher. I don't really didn't want to. There's been many days and still many times that I just soon say, Lord, why don't you take this deal for me? I'm sure there's somebody that's suitable, somebody that's going to be a, a little easier going at times and not get so wound up and jacked up and not worry so much about things. There's got to be somebody else. But again, I, I, I realize is that through... My weakness is what Paul said. Christ is made strong. He, he, he is the one that, 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 that everybody begins to look at. And so we've got to make sure that the glory goes to him no matter what our giftedness is, whether we're gifted in the behind-the-scenes type gifts or we're gifted in the out-front type gifts, that the Lord receives the glory. So let's look at our text this morning, 1 Peter chapter 4, starting in verse 10. This is what Peter says to the church. This is what he says to us. As each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Whoever speaks is to do so as one who is speaking the utterances of God. Whoever serves is to do so as the one who is serving by the strength which God supplies, so that in all things, I think all means all, right? All things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you right now, and Lord, that's what we want to do. We want to put the spotlight on Jesus. We want to make much of him, Lord, in all that is done, all that is said in this place. Father, from uh, making an announcement, Lord, to, to leading worship in song, to worship through the preaching of your word. God, in all that we do as a cowboy church here, I pray that we would put the spotlight on Jesus Christ and make much of him, Lord God. Realizing, Lord, that we don't gift ourselves, Father. We don't bless ourselves. It's not about us, Lord. It's about you. So I pray that Nathan Duncan will be hidden behind the cross of Jesus, that your word, Lord, would go as it should, Father, that it would be preached as it should, that your Holy Spirit would move in might and power, and, Lord, that minds and hearts would be changed for your glory today. Lord, we love you and we praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. You know, if you're a Christian... A sure enough, bona fide follower of Jesus. I don't mean just 
a person that goes to church. I'm talking about a totally different person. I'm talking about a, a sure enough disciple of Jesus Christ. God has given gifts to you. And there are a great variety, like I said just a few moments ago. And so what we've got to do is we've got to learn to be good managers of the gifts that God has given us. Good managers. We've got to be good stewards. We've got to be just like the men that were in the parable. The first two at least. We've got to make sure that we take the talents, the spiritual gifts that God has given us and use them for God's glory. We can't be like the last one. What did he do? He buried it. We can't bury our gifts. We've got to use them so that God's generosity, God's grace, God's mercy flows through us each and every day. You know, whatever you've been spiritually gifted in, we need to do it with the strength and the energy that God supplies. Let me tell you about something about church burnout. You know why the reason most people burn out within the church? Because they're doing it in their own power. They're doing it in their own strength. It becomes a thing where you say, you know what? I want to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this in my own strength. Whenever I try to pastor this church in my own strength, in my own will, guess what happens? I begin to burn out. It gets to where every time my phone rings and I hear, I got the moose sound, it goes, I go, oh my gosh. Please, please not let this be another problem. Please not let this be a little fire over here or somebody's marriage wrecking out over here. And I begin to burn out. But whenever I see it differently, when I realize and I say to the Lord, God, I cannot do this. Guess what happens? The Lord begins to use the gifts that he has blessed me with. And I began to rely on the Lord's strength and the Holy Spirit's power to be able to minister in times that I don't feel like ministering. What are the spiritual gifts? Basically, spiritual gifts can be defined like this. Special God-given abilities that Christians have to build up the church. And realize they are god given abilities and so we need to manage them well first corinthians chapter 12 4 through 13 and i'll expand a little bit more on this this text uh next week but i just want you to listen to a, a few key words in this text he says this is paul talking to the church at corinth he says there are varieties of gifts but the same spirit and there are varieties of ministries and the same lord there are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by one Spirit, and to another the effecting of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another distinguishing of the spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same Spirit. Here, verse 11. One and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing each one individually just as he wills. Verse 12. For even as the body is one, and yet has many members... And all the members of the body, through though they are many, are one body. So also is Christ. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free. And we are all made to drink of one Spirit. So what are spiritual gifts? They are special God-given abilities that should be used for God's glory within the church. It builds up the church. It edifies the church. It, can, it makes the church grow. That's how we use it. To, that's how we use it for God's glory. 1 Corinthians 12, 11, look at that verse again. It says, but one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing each one individually just as He wills. So the Holy Spirit is the one he is the one that gives these gifts and he alone is the one who decides which which 
you know, who gets each gift. Now, one of the biggest things that I see sometimes with folks is that when they discover what their spiritual gifts are, they start utilizing their, their spiritual gifts. They may want a particular gift that the Lord is not planning on giving them. Does that make sense? And so they began to pray and pray and pray. But for whatever reason, the Lord didn't bless you with that gift. Why? Because we need to be well-rounded. And so I equate this with a well-rounded ranch horse. All right? This is what goes through my feeble little mind. I don't want just a roping horse. Why? Because that sucker only knows one thing. See that chute open up? Throw me a loop. Go left. That's not what I'm looking for. All right? I'm not wanting just a horse you can pin on or a horse that you can sort on. Why? Because that's the only thing that it thinks that it can do. I don't want just a cutting horse, right? Because guess what? If I get on a horse that's just a cutting horse, and I've bought a few here lately trying to make some ranch horse out of them over the last couple of years, and they're pretty good, okay? Except sometimes whenever you're trying to pull a sick calf out, it wants to go ahead and dart up on front of it and stop it and move it back the other way, so you've got to be ready and watch how you ride. I want a well-rounded horse. I don't need a horse that does everything excellent. I'm just soon just have a horse that knows the different parts of what it is we're doing and can calm down a minute to understand what it is we're doing. Same thing with the Spirit. The Spirit gifts us differently to make the church a well-rounded church. What if everybody's gift in here was preaching? Huh? I don't even like preachers, to be honest with you. I'll just be honest. Well, I know I am one, so I can say it. But the biggest thing about preachers is you get them into a room, son, and I mean, but they're, they're, you can't talk. You understand what I'm talking about? Why? Because they're the ones that are talking the whole time. Talk, 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 you know, and they're wanting to tell you this, and they're wanting to tell you that, and they're showing you this, and they're telling you that, and everything. Imagine if we was a whole church full of preachers. Whoo! That's a fear and a phobia, my Lord. What if we were a church of people that all had the exact same gifts, we would not be well-rounded. We would be tunnel-visioned, right? We'd only be going towards one certain direction, all of us not collectively using, you know, as we should. Some of us would not be needed, am I right? I'll be honest with you. If we had a, 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 if we had a whole church full of preachers, uh, one of us, you know, a lot of us wouldn't be needed today, am I right? But what does God do? God in his mercy, in verse 11, it tells us that he distributes to each one individually just as he wills. What are the spiritual gifts? They are special God-given abilities, given by the Holy Spirit. And thirdly, every believer in Christ has received a gift. If you don't know what your giftedness is, Spiritual giftedness, it, it, it's not because you don't have one. It's just that you have not discovered what it is yet. And if you haven't discovered what it is yet, you may actually technically already be using it. You may not be able to put a name on it. You may not understand it. By, but by the will of God for boneheads, okay? I'm one of them, so I can, I'm, I'm with you. By the will of God for boneheads, sometimes we just begin to utilize our spiritual gifts even though we don't necessarily know exactly what it's called. I believe the Holy Spirit does that in us. But 1 Corinthians 12, 7, I want you to go back to that. It says that each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for what? For the common good. The common good of what? The church. The church. That's what it's for. What is the church made? What is the church here for? To advance the gospel to tell the Great Commission. Spiritual gifts build up the body of Christ. And let me ask you a question, and it's a hurtful question. If you are not building up the body of Christ, what is it that you're doing? Seriously, what is it that you're doing? I mean, really think about that. It's rhetorical. You don't have to give me an answer. I think all of us have to ask ourselves a question. If you are not building up the church as a whole. I'm not just talking about Thousand Hills Cowboy Church. I'm talking about the church across the world. If you're not using your gifts within the local body, okay, that you associate yourself with, what is it that you're doing? What is it that we've been called to do? We've been called to utilize our gifts within the church for the common 
good. Not by our will, but by God's will. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use you, Terry, as a volunteer. Come here. Grab a chair on your way. Let me see the best spot for you to sit right here. Well, not sit, stand here by me. Terry's a little guy. Um, did you work out this morning? Did you eat a lot of protein? <laughs> Terry, I just simply want you to... Let me, let me, let me go back. I'm botching this already on live TV. All right. <clears throat> Paul described the church as the body. That was his favorite description of the church, okay? And everybody's got a body, right? Everything working, not so much anymore. You got old, your arthritis, you got cold, it's cold outside. But as a body, everything functions and working together. The brain sends signals down to what it is that you're wanting to do. Am I right? Like when I'm preaching, I'm always moving these hands. I'm getting my cardio in while I preach, right? I'm going to say Terry is the elbow of the church. Okay? All right? You're probably maybe wanting the forearm, maybe the muscle. You can't be the head because who's the head? Jesus, all right? Jesus is the head of the church. But we're everything else from the neck below, okay, within the body of Christ. That's what we've been called to do. So I'm going to call Terry the elbow. Now, the elbow doesn't really seem like a premier part of the body. Am I right? I mean, I'm thinking a premier part of the body is going to be what, Terry? What would you say it would be? Like a hand? I mean, like a hand, you know, that's, that's pretty doggone important. Feet, that sort of deal, you know. But the elbow, you don't really think a whole lot about. So, Terry, I just want you to take your left hand and just pick that chair up. Oh, very easy. You're a pretty strong guy. Th that was no problem at all, right? All right, now I want you to take your hand. Give me your hand here. And ball it up for me, all right? Now, He-Man, don't jack my illustration up. I got to leave a little bit for the 11 o'clock. Now, that's going to overpower you, okay? All right? Don't, if you come out with it, it's going to blow this deal, okay? So, now, Terry, I want you to do the exact same thing. Go ahead. All right? All right? Now, without the scoop, pick it up. Yeah, you can. Figure it out. I bet you can. I bet you could probably use your knee and your forearm maybe to lock into that thing and probably... Look here. Very good. Now, let me, let me ask you this. You can go sit down, Terry. Thank you so much. Good job. Give him a hand. A hand. Yeah, yeah, take it with you. Use your right hand. I'm sure you get the point. The task could still be accomplished, but not perfectly. Am I right? You could still get done what needed to be done. Why? Because there were other willing parts doing something that was unnatural. And Terry's brain right off the bat, he probably could have figured it out, but you call him in front of a bunch of people, he probably got a little embarrassed or whatever. He didn't know that I was going to call him up here. But the, the, bo the body can figure out how to do what it needs to do when it does not have the rest of the members, right? You ever watch YouTube? You ever seen the people that are born without any arms, right? Our legs, and they're getting around and swimming. You ever seen that one guy that's the, the, the speaker, and all he, he, he grew, he, the way he was born, he's got like just a couple, like a hand down there on his bottom, but he can swim, and he takes that little hand and swims all over, and he can do pretty much anything in life. You seen that one? Why? Because, I'm going to tell you what, human beings are pretty resilient. They will figure it out. But what's the difficulty level? How much easier was it when Terry's hand was not bound? He was just a simple elbow. But what did it take to pick the chair up correctly? I'll give you a guess. It took his hand. 
And even when that hand was crippled up, it was taped up, and there wasn't nothing else that he could do. He could figure it out and do something different, but it took more effort, and every part of the body was doing something that it wasn't really normally planned to do. The brain was saying, no, you really can't do it now because you're taped up, and so you're going to have to figure out another way to get it accomplished, but he got it accomplished. Now think about that within the church body. If all Christians have been given at least... And I'm pretty sure there's evidence right there. In verse 7, each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. What happens when you don't use your gift? What happens when an elbow is willing, but a hand says, You know what? I'm going to go do my own thing. I'm mad. I don't like the way they're doing stuff. My feelings are hurt. They didn't recognize me enough. They didn't acknowledge me enough. What happens when the hand goes and takes his ball and goes home? Well, my first inclination, and it will probably always be, is bye. There'll be another hand come along. But what about you? What is it that you miss? What do you miss out? You miss out on using God-given abilities, spiritual giftedness for the common good of the body. And somebody else has to come up and pick up your slack. Guys, that is the idea and the reason why Paul said that the church was a body with many members. It's not membership like a card-carrying membership or being a part of the American Express deal. It's about the members of your body working together for the common good. Spiritual gifts build up the body of Christ. And if you ain't building up the body, what are you doing? Spiritual gift is given to each of us as a means of helping the entire church. Listen, when an elbow is at work, guess what? It's helping my hands. When a knee is at work, it's helping those feet. All right? And don't get me wrong, there's all sorts of body parts within the church that you've got to deal with. Don't get me wrong. You've got to deal with them knees. You've got to deal with them ankles. You've got to deal with the butt, right? I mean, you just got to. You've got all these different parts that work. But when they're not working, somebody has to come and they have to pick up the slack. When you hold out on your church, the church does not function as it should. When you withhold your gift, you cripple the church. As members that come to church, and if you're a follower of Jesus Christ and you're a member of the body of Christ, if the only thing you do is come to church on Sunday and then you've done your deal and your week's over with, wait till the next Sunday, then you are not being used as the Lord intended. Now, I know some of you don't like that, but it's the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts us. You're going to have to get over it, but show me where I'm wrong. Show me where I'm wrong. Because the church goes beyond Sunday gatherings, don't it? It goes into everyday life. How are you using gifts to change the world by advancing the gospel on Monday? How do we practice stewardship of the gifts that God has given us? I am so glad that you asked me that question. Thank you so much. First thing you do is you identify your giftedness. You identify it. The second thing you do is you allow God to fully develop that gift within you. You know what you do thirdly? You use them. <laughs> you use them. You get out there and you use them. But you've got to remember that spiritual gifts are not about you. They're not about me. They are about the Lord. They're not based on you and your abilities and your talents. They are based on the Lord for His glory. That's why we don't boast in ourselves. We boast in the Lord. 2 Corinthians 10, 17 through 18 reminds us of this. But he who boasts is to boast in the Lord. For it is not he who commends himself that is approved, but he whom the Lord commends. Are you using your gifts for God's glory? Do you know what they are? 
today, and not just today only, but today, I've got a little tool for you, if you want it. If you don't want it, cool. Not going to hurt my feelings at all. I've just got a question mark in my head. If you don't know what your spiritual gifts are, there's two ways that you can do kind of a spiritual gift survey. And guys, let me tell you something. It's not, this is not a 100% deal, okay? But it can kind of get your mind going and some, some things stirring in you where maybe you can figure out what some giftedness, gifted, giftedness is that the Lord has given you, and then you'll hear about it next week. But as you leave today, back there on that info table in a little rectangular box, there are some copies of a, what they call a spiritual gift survey. Okay, nothing magical about it. All it does is ask you some key questions to maybe help you to, to see whether or not you have some of, those, some of those gifts. If you want to grab a copy, you'll need one per person. If you want to grab a, a copy of that, you are welcome to them. I think that there's about 100 back there. We may need more. If you're not wanting to go old school paper type deal and you have downloaded the app, Thousand Hills' app, you can go right to the app. You can tap on the connection connect button. And it's actually right there on the app. Uh, it was put on there this weekend. And you can do it through the app, and it'll tally your scores and tell you what it is and all that kind of stuff as well. But it's just right there on the app. I want to encourage you, if you do not know what your spiritual gifts are, to take one of those and kind of try to figure a little bit out over the week of where you need to be serving. A lot of times people burn out. One, because they're not doing it in the Lord's power. And the second point of that deal is this. is because they're in areas and working in areas they're not gifted in. You understand? I've met people before that, that really, 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 really wanted to preach, but they weren't necessarily gifted in that area. And it's not about the individual. It's about what the Lord wills. Okay? It's not because just they're charismatic. It's, I mean, can they teach people the Word of God? Can they open up the, the Word of God and read it and say, okay, yeah, man, this is how this applies and go after it. And even though they really, really wanted to preach, God hadn't called them to be a preacher. And guess what? It's epic. <laughs> Does that make sense? I don't have the gift of, there's a, there's a spiritual gift. I'll talk about it next week. But there's a spiritual gift of mercy. You ever heard of it? And it's actually a spiritual gift. We're called to practice mercy. But then there's actually a spiritual gift of mercy. So it's not just practicing it. It's, it's you've been given this God-given gift to be merciful when, times, when, when, it, when it calls for it. I am probably one of the least merciful people that I know. I mean, I just am. I, I, I don't want to be. Maybe it's how I grew up. I don't want to be. I prayed for the, the Lord to give me the gift of mercy because I'm the, I am honestly the person that in the moment of, man, you really need to show some mercy right here, I'm thinking, you are so stupid. Why don't you just quit doing what's wrong with you? You understand what I'm saying? That's not what I want to do. But there's just something in me that says, say it, say it. So, you know, this old devil just wearing me out because that is just not a spot that I'm very gifted in. I want to be, but at times I'm not. And so we can't, I mean, there are some gifts that you can fake. There ain't no doubt about it. And I'll talk about that next week. But true spiritual gifts are given by the Lord. And when they are working in a church, boy, everything is like a, I mean, it, it, everything is flowing and going and people are getting saved and you're seeing this movement of God in this person's lives and lives are being changed because the church is just working, 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 doing what it's supposed to be doing. And guess what? Nobody's burning out. Nobody's wearing out because we're doing it within God's spirit. We're doing it within God's parameters. People are working in their calling so they're not burning out. And guess what? God is glorified in everything that they do and everything that they say as the body of Christ. That is where we have got to be as a church. Moving into 2018, that's where we've got to be. And the question that I have for each and every one of you, if you are part of the body of Jesus Christ, is are you using your gifts? If you don't know what they are, let's figure out what they are so we can get after it. This morning, and, and let me tell you this too, if you're taking notes, I, I want you to look at these texts before we talk about them next week. Romans chapter 12, 6 through 8, 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11, 
1 Peter, again, we'll look at these again, 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11. And basically what these three texts will show will show us God's design regarding his gifts. So that's Romans 12, 6 through 8, 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11, 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11. Read through those. Begin to, to study on them. Begin to think on those things. Figure, figure out maybe what God's calling you to. Take that survey. Get Kind of get in your mind what it is God's gifted you. If you want to talk to me about your giftedness, man, I love to talk about, you know, people serving the Lord Jesus in, in here and everywhere. Maybe this morning you've come and, and, man, you've been holding out. You've been holding out for whatever reason. Your feelings have been hurt at some point, maybe here, maybe somewhere else. You don't feel like that, 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 that since you ain't got the, the, the gift of preaching or teaching, that you can't be used. But I'll tell you what, that's hogwash. That's a, that's a lie from the devil. Maybe this morning, just reading through some of these texts, the Lord is working on you pretty hard about getting in somewhere using those gifts, not just on Sundays, not just stuff at Thousand Hills, but throughout life. I'm going to tell you what, I encourage you to pray that the Holy Spirit would renew in you that spirit, that he would move on you, that he would convict you until you can't do nothing but something. Maybe this morning you don't have a right relationship with the Lord for whatever reason, wherever you've been, you don't think that you can have a right relationship with God, I'm telling you again, that's hogwash. That's a lie straight from the devil himself. The Bible is pretty clear that all of us are in the same spot. All have sinned, all have fallen short of the glory of God. Maybe this morning you want to know what it means to be forgiven, to have your sins cleansed, to be made right before a holy God. I'll tell you what, this morning as we close, there'll be some guys here that love to talk to you about how you can be made right before a holy God, how you can get involved in ministry that would make a difference in this world. Maybe this morning, there's some things that you need to work out. You need to give to the Lord. You need to lay at His feet today. I'm going to tell you what. If that's you, get it done. we got work to do. we got talents that need to be shared. I want to pray with you. We're going to get going. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for using folks that seem like that they could never be used. Lord, thank you for working and moving and doing and being the God that you are, a graceful, merciful God who uses common, ordinary, everyday people each and every day for your glory. Father, I pray that we would take these verses to heart, Lord, that they'd be something on our mind the rest of this week, Lord, we can't stand it until we get out and we do something. Help us to understand and move. Help us to understand our giftedness. Lord, how we can be using the talents that you have given us. How we can multiply them for your glory. We love you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.